Welcome to day one into the boot camp for UI automation. Today we will start with the most important topic that is the front end UI and the basic tools which are used to create front end application. Now question also arises like why as an automation engineer we need to care to know about this knowledge. This is because XPath works on HTML, CSS paths works on CSS. You mimicking a mouse hover on an element is being done via JavaScript and at the root level HTML, CSS and JavaScript are the only three things required to build a front end UI. There are plenty of front end application frameworks available using which people create UI, React, AngularJS, Vue.js. At the bottom of all this, what is being used is HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I have also prepared a small demo application to demonstrate how XPath, CSS paths and JavaScript are used by automation engineers and and the same things are used by developers to develop the front end UI application. So in this case this is running on my local machine. Let me give you a walkthrough of the application first. So it's a very simple application where I have provided three different anchor tags which are pointing to three different sites. So if you click on it this will open podtest.in my website. If you click on this it will open the LinkedIn page and if you click on the last link it will open the YouTube channel. Now let me show you how developers use HTML, CSS and JavaScript to write this application. So this is the HTML page where we have defined the skeleton of the page. So this is the HTML section within it we have the head section where we have provided the link for our CSS styling sheet and we have the body where we have provided all the three URLs under the list tags and we are also injecting the javascript under the script tag now and if you would see we have different attributes being used to uniquely identify these different selectors on the page and these attributes are used by the automation engineers to write their locator strategies and the same attributes are used to provide CSS styling to those elements. So if you would see in the style.css sheet which is being used to provide the styling to this page we have this style.css file where if you would see we are providing these styling but the stylings are applied using the same way we write CSS path. So we had this anchor tag which has the id attribute LinkedIn id. And if you go on to the style.css sheet over here to provide the styling to that element, we use the same concept. We have written the CSS path for it. It is using the ID which is represented by a hash and then the ID in our case that is LinkedIn hyphen ID and then we are, we are saying that okay wherever we find this ID please provide this styling to it. And similarly in case of classes we have a anchor tag with the class name videos so dot represents the class name so it is saying apply this styling on the element which has this class name and similarly we are saying that under the anchor tag there is a class with the name website apply the styling of color blue to that element and as the automation engineer we also tend to use the same strategy to write our css path so that we can get to that selector and use them for our automation action mimic. Now coming on to the last part of JavaScript which is used to add the behavior to the application. So in this JavaScript file we have provided three different behaviors and to provide the behaviors again we require the CSS paths. If you would see we have written document.query selector. Query selector expects you to write a CSS path and we have written again dot website is the class name of an anchor element. So it is saying that okay go to this element and add an event listener to it. So what it does is it is saying that okay whenever someone hovers the mouse over this element you please run this script which is changing the background of this element to this color. And similarly when someone moves out the mouse from the element change the color to orange. And there is an additional thing which I am doing where I am logging one of the messages on the screen. And I will show you where you can see these messages on the dev tool. So let's see. So let me right click over here and do an inspect. So this will open the dev tools for us. And the first thing we see is the HTML rendering of this website. Over here you can see this HTML DOM is similar to what we had in our project. It has taken up that HTML to render the website and this is how it looks like. Now this is like the skeleton of the page. These colors right and these styling are coming from using the CSS paths. Where is the CSS? If you will see on the right hand side this is the style section. So let's say that we want to check the styling on this particular element. So let's do this. So we click on this element. It, op it says that this is the element for it and this is the styling applied. So you can see that over here 
the styling which we provided from our CSS sheet is being displayed here, which is saying that dot videos and apply this styling over it, which is this, right? And now to mimic the JavaScript behavior which we had on the hovering of the mouse and moving out the mouse, this is the behavior. If you hover the mouse, it shows green. And if you move out the mouse, it shows orange. And to see the JavaScript, this is where it was placed. And, ho and over here in the DevTools, you can find it under the application tab. Go to scripts. And this is the script.js. And this is what we have provided as part of our project. And these two are providing the behavior of hovering the mouse over this my website link. And then removing it brings the orange color. And the last thing which the JavaScript was doing for us was logging the information when someone was clicking on it. Where do you see that information? Let's say that I clicked on this. So once you click on it, it opens up the page. But let's see where that message comes in, right? It will appear in this console. You can see pod test website URL is clicked. So everything you've written as part of a UI application, you can see it on the dev tools. On the elements tab, you will see the styling and the HTML. On the application tab, you can see the JavaScript file and even the styling part of it. And also, you can see the JavaScript logging which is happening or the error logs whichever will appear while rendering the page will all show up here in this console tag. Now let's see how as an automation engineer you can use all this information for your advantage. So first thing, the understanding of an HTML tags and the sequencing of it will help you to write a better XPath and will tell you about the structure of the application how it is being rendered. Let's say that we want to click on this subscribe my YouTube channel, right? So what we'll do? We need to find and selector for it. So how we'll do it? We can just right click on it. We can inspect it and we know, right? That this is the selector for it. So what we need to do is, so we need to provide the selector for it. So what we can do is we can use these attributes, right? ID, class, href, even the text. So let us use the class part. Let's see how this helps us to write the X path. So we'll do double slash anchor tag. We'll do class equals to videos. And it is perfectly matching to the element we wanted. We can use this X path in our automation suit to reach to this element. And then we can provide a method to it to click on it. Now let's work on the CSS path. Now as the front end developer used those CSS path to write the styling for it, we can use the CSS using the same concept and write the CSS path for it again to reach to this element over here. So how we can do this? We can use these attributes again. So let's write the CSS path for this element again. So we can just simply write dot videos and this is matching to one of the element on the DOM, which is this. And this is exactly what the developers wrote to provide the styling to this element. Now the last part, the JavaScript part. So let's come to the console tab here. So using this console tab, we will write our own JavaScript to mimic the behavior of clicking on this my YouTube channel link. So let's do it. So we'll use the same strategy document.query selector and then within it we'll provide a CSS path, which would be dot videos again. And after this, there are methods which this uh, HTML DOM provides us. So the method is dot click. Once you enter this, you will see that it, it clicks on that URL and it will open the YouTube page. See, see, correct. So using the same concepts within the automation, you use all these three HTML DOM, CSS path, X path, and these JavaScript queries to perform your day to day job. And this is a very essential knowledge, which you all should have because these are like nut and bolts of the complete automation machinery. If you understand this well, you will be able to proceed with a better understanding and you will have better results than anyone else who doesn't know these things. So hopefully when you will be using the front end application in your projects, in your companies, you will be able to make sense of things, how the front end application is working. You can try to go to the element section. You can try to go to the application section and see what all information do you see there. I hope now you will appreciate the fact that why HTML, CSS, and JavaScripts are so important for us to understand and how as an automation engineer, they help us to write the better automation scripts. I hope you enjoyed the session today and would have learned something new. If you did, please subscribe the channel and do share the content with others as well.